A lithium-ion battery, often known as a Li-ion battery, is a type of advanced battery technology that bases its electrochemistry around the presence of lithium ions. Ionization and electron separation occurs when lithium atoms in the anode undergo the process of a discharge cycle in a battery. What is the most up-to-date technology for lithium batteries? Many of today's technological advancements would not have been possible without the development of the lithium-ion battery. They have made it possible for us to utilize mobile phones, computers, and other gadgets. Is the future of batteries found in lithium-ion solid-state cells? Hello everyone, welcome back to the future space. In today's video, we are going to discuss something which seems impossible, but now with the help of some brilliant minds, this new battery technology is here. Want to know more about it? All right, just stay with us as we are about to begin. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. And let's begin. The growth of the market for electric vehicles requires batteries that can be charged quickly and that have a long lifespan. However, the lithium-ion batteries that are now available do not meet these requirements because they are too heavy, too costly, and take too long to charge. Solid-state lithium metal batteries store much more power in the same amount of space and can be recharged in a fraction of the time required by conventional lithium-ion batteries. Researchers have been working for decades to find a way to tap into the potential of these batteries. An Overview of the Development of the Lithium-Ion Battery In the midst of the oil crisis that engulfed the world in the 1970s, an English chemist named Stanley Whittingham, who was employed by ExxonMobil at the time, began investigating the concept of a new type of battery. This battery would be capable of recharging itself in a relatively short amount of time and would hopefully one day lead to the elimination of the need for fossil fuels. In his first attempt, he attempted to use titanium disulfide and lithium metal as the electrodes. However, the combination caused a number of obstacles, including significant safety issues. He ultimately abandoned this approach. Exxon made the decision to put an end to the experiment when the battery suffered a short circuit and caught fire. On the other hand, John B. Goodenough, who is presently a professor of engineering at the University of Texas in Austin, came up with a different concept. In the 1980s, he conducted experiments in which he used lithium cobalt oxide as a cathode rather than titanium disulfide. The results were successful. The battery's energy potential was increased by a factor of two. After waiting another five years, Akira Yoshino of Meiho University in Nagoya, Japan, carried out a second exchange. He tried using a carbonaceous material, petroleum coke, as the anode rather than the reactive lithium metal, which led to a revolutionary discovery. Not only was the new battery significantly safer without lithium metal, but the battery performance was more stable, which led to the production of the first prototype of the lithium-ion battery. These three separate discoveries contributed to the development of the lithium-ion battery as we know it today. According to Xin Li, an associate professor of material science at the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Science, a lithium metal battery is considered the holy grail for battery chemistry because of its high capacity and energy density. However, the consistency of these batteries has never been particularly good. Now, Lee and his colleagues have developed a lithium metal solid-state battery that is stable and can be charged and discharged at a high current density for at least 10,000 times. This is a far higher number of cycles than what has been achieved in earlier research. The researchers combine the novel design with a cathode material that is available on the market that has a high energy density. Because of advancements in battery technology, electric vehicles may soon have a lifespan comparable to that of gasoline-powered automobiles 10 to 15 years before it is necessary to replace the battery. As a result of the battery's high current density, it may be possible to develop electric cars that require just 10 to 20 minutes to get a full charge. The group led by Associate Professor Xin Li was successful in developing a lithium metal battery that is both stable and capable of being charged and drained at least 10,000 times. Our study reveals that the solid-state battery might be fundamentally different from the commercial liquid electrolyte lithium-ion battery, said Lee. We will be able to unleash higher performance and make use of their enormous prospects if we comprehend the fundamental thermodynamics of these systems. Chemistry has always been the primary obstacle to overcome when working with lithium metal batteries. During the charging process, lithium batteries transport the lithium ions that are present in the cathode to the anode. On the surface of the anode, needle-like structures that are referred to as the dendrites emerge when the anode is formed of lithium metal. 
These structures penetrate the barrier that separates the anode and cathode in the electrolyte and grow like roots into the electrolyte, which causes the battery to short out or even catch fire. To find a solution to this problem, Lee and his colleagues came up with the concept of a multi-layer battery, which utilizes a variety of materials with differing degrees of stability to create a sandwich between the anode and the cathode. This multi-layer and multi-material battery avoids the penetration of lithium dendrites, not by completely halting their growth, but rather by regulating and confining the growth of those dendrites within the battery. Imagine the battery as being similar to a BLT sandwich. The bread, which represents the lithium metal anode, comes first, followed by the lettuce, which represents the graphite covering. Following that will be a layer of tomatoes, which will serve as the first electrolyte, followed by a layer of bacon, which will serve as the second electrolyte. Put on one more layer of tomatoes, then top it up with the final slice of bread, which will serve as the cathode. The first electrolyte, also known by its chemical name, li 55 ps 45 c L1.5, or LPSCI, is more stable when combined with lithium, although it is more susceptible to dendrite penetration. The second electrolyte, known as LGPS, is not as stable with lithium as the first, but it does not appear to be affected by dendrites. Dendrites are permitted to grow in this configuration via the graphite and the first electrolyte, but their development is halted once they reach the second electrolyte. To put it another way, the dendrites develop all the way through the lettuce and tomato but halt when they reach the bacon. Because of the bacon barrier, the dendrites are prevented from breaking the circuit and shorting out the battery. Our strategy of incorporating instability in order to stabilize the battery feels counterintuitive, said Lu Han Yi, co-author of the paper and graduate student at SEAS. However, just as an anchor can guide and control a screw going into a wall, so too can our multi-layer design guide and control the growth of dendrites," said Lu Han Yi. The difference is that our anchor rapidly becomes too tight for the dendrite to drill through, thus the dendritic growth is stopped," Li continued. The chemistry of the battery makes it capable of self-healing, meaning that it can patch up any damage caused by the dendrites. This proof-of-concept design suggests that lithium metal solid-state batteries might be competitive with commercial lithium-ion batteries," said Li. This design shows that lithium metal solid-state batteries may be used instead of lithium-ion batteries. Because of its adaptability and versatility, our multi-layer design has the potential to be compatible with the techniques used for mass manufacturing in the battery sector. It won't be simple to scale it up such that it can be used in commercial batteries, and there are still some practical hurdles to overcome, and we are certain that they can be. And that's for today's video. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. Let us know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. You can also watch our other videos that have been specially selected for you. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.